Kwam Yashala. Hayam Yaya Howadai. Kaleb Yasharala. We gonna start it off like we always do. John 8 and 32 states what? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Again? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, now we're gonna jump right on into that thing, man. Um Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45 and 7. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Read it again. I form the light and create darkness. Just in case you forgot about that, what he did and said back in Genesis. Come on. I make peace and create evil. Read that part one more time. I make peace. He create the peace. And create evil. And he creates evil. Come on. I, the Lord, do all these things. He's the one who's taking credit for everything. So when they get shot down around the corner, when the little boy, baby's born around the corner, he's saying, I do all these things. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Uh huh. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Read it one more time. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. <laughs> Can't nobody say you're at the hands of the Most High once he got his eye set on you. Read it one more time for me, I. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. See, so first he started out letting you know, ain't nobody else present. What he's doing, what he do, what he do. Come on. I kill. He kills. And I make a lie. And he the one who causing those babies to be born, just like I stated. Come on. I wound. He wound them folks around the corner when they get caught up in their wickedness. Come on. And I heal. And he healed them folks at different times than other. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Ain't nobody can save you once you get into the, the sights of the Most High. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. Come on. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. Uh-huh. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. Read it again. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. The Lord killeth and he maketh alive. The same thing he done said in the previous other two scriptures. Come on. He bringeth down to the grave. He bringeth everybody down to the grave. You know if you sleep. You're dead at that point. Come on. And bringeth up. And he bringeth up. These are the babies I'm talking about. The people that turn around from the hospital visits and come home. That's what he's going into right there. Jo Joel chapter 3 verse 2. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. Come on. The book of Joel chapter 3 verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat uh -huh. and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Read it one more time. I, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's around the Euphrates River from the Persian Gulf all the way back up into Turkey. Come on. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. We're going to find out how the Most High pleased with people in just a moment. Come on. Whom they have scattered among the nations. Whom they did what? Scattered among the nations. One more time. Scattered among the nations. Come on. And parted my land. What did they do to the land? And parted my land. God, now we're going to find out a little bit more about how the Most High pleased with people. Isaiah 66 and 16. Get a better understanding of how the Most High pleased with folks. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 16. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Read it again. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. One more time for the people who listening. For by fire 
and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. This is how he going to plead with all flesh, man. Come on. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the what? The slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord going to be many. Exodus chapter 22, verse 24. Exodus chapter 22, verse 24. Shalom to my brothers online watching right now. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 22 and verse 24. Come on. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. Read it one more time. And my wrath shall wax hot. He going to be hot as a mug, man. This, you know how you are boiling something on the, on, the, on the stove and it runs over? Read that again. And my wrath shall wax hot. The word the word wax in there means abundant. Come on. And I will kill you with the sword. He going to do what? Kill you with the sword. I thought, I thought they said he loved everybody and he was a nice guy. He going to kiss the babies and everything. Read that again. And I will kill you with the sword. He going to kill these peoples, man. And your wives shall be widows. He going to make your wife. Husbandless and your children fatherless, <laughs> and the, the, the children ain't gonna have no pappy. <laughs> Psalms 90 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 90 and verse 5. Psalms 90 and verse 5. Come on, the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 5. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. Read it again. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. Because y'all remember back in Genesis, he carried them people, millions and billions of people away with that flood. Come on. They are as a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. They, the people are just like grass that growing up. You see, he replenished the earth again just like grass. It came back. Job chapter 9, verse 22. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 22. This is one thing, therefore I therefore I said it. He destroys the perfect and the wicked. Come on, read it again. This is one thing, therefore I said it. He destroyeth the perfect. Hold on, wait a minute. The most high said he destroyeth the perfect. Come on. And the wicked. And the wicked. We're going to find out a little bit more about that Acts 10 and 34 now. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 now. Get a little bit in depth of what the Most High talking about right there. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth uh -huh. and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Read it again. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. He don't care about the, the perfect or the wicked. He's no respecter of person. So when we see up here, he say he destroyed the perfect and the wicked. Now we just got to uh, came and heard what um, he said right here in Acts 10. He's no respecter of person, man. He don't care who it is. Ezekiel chapter 21 and verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 21 and verse 4. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 21, verse 4. Uh-huh. Seeing then that I will cut out from the, the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath against all flesh from the south to the north. Read that again. Seeing then that I will cut out from the, the righteous and the wicked. See, right there, he's telling you again, he is no respecter of person. You can read it one more time from the top. Ah. Seeing then... That I will cut off from the the righteous and the wicked, the good, the do gooder, and the wicked people. Come on. Therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath. His sword gonna go forth against all flesh from the south to the north. He gonna kill all flesh. He is no respecter of person. He don't care, man. He don't care about that. Matthews, Matthews chapter ten and verse twenty eight. Matthews chapter ten and verse twenty eight. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Read it again. 
and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Uh huh. So don't fear nobody who can kill your physical body, but you better fear the Most High, because He can kill what? But rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's right. That's what we're supposed to fear. Nobody else. He didn't give us no, no spirit of fear. Luke chapter 12, verse 5. Luke chapter 12, verse 5. Luke chapter 12, verse 5. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 12, verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. And so the scriptures are about to forewarn us who we should fear. Come on. Fear him. Fear who? Him. Yahweh, come on. Which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Cast where? Into hell. Come on. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. That's right. That's the only man we should fear. The most high Yahweh. Jeremiah 25 and 31. Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 31. Come on. The book of Jeremiah chapter 25. Verse 31. Uh-huh. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. A noise gonna come to the ends of the earth. Pay attention now. Come on. For the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. A controversy with the nations. But in the controversy is gonna cause a great noise to proceed first. Come on. He will plead with all flesh. We already know how the most high plead. We read that back in Isaiah 66. He's gonna plead with a sword. Come on. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. Says the Lord. We, he he going to kill all these wicked Negroes, man. Read it one more time, huh? A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. We're going to find out more about this noise in just a moment. Come on. For the Lord has a controversy with the nations. That's why he visiting us. Come on. He will plead with all flesh. We already know. He topping, he topping niggas off. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. He going he gonna to kill everybody with that sword, man. Now let's look at... um. Second Peter's to find out more about this great Noah. Second Peter's chapter three, verse ten through thirteen. Second Peter's chapter three, verse ten through thirteen. Come on, the book of Second Peter chapter three, verses ten through thirteen. Uh huh. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's gonna sneak up on you, man. In thee, which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. What's that great noise gonna be? Nuclear warfare, the great noise you're going to be listening to that we just heard back then going to be boom. Come on. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What the elements going to do? Melt with fervent heat. One more time. Melt with fervent heat. It's going to be really, really hot. So hot it's going to melt everything. It's hotter than lava, man. Read. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. What's going to happen? Read that again. The earth also... And the works that are therein shall be burned up. Everything going to perish, man. Come on. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Seeing then that all of this is going to transpire. Come on. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all... Hold on. Read that slow one more time. What manner? What manner of persons ought ye to be... What manner of people? How should we condone ourselves? Come on. In all holy conversation. In all holy conversa uh, conversation. Come on. And godliness. And godliness. Keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, man. Ain't nothing else going to save you, man. That's not it. Come on. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire. The heavens being what? On fire. Come on. Shall be dissolved. Shall be what? Dissolved. Uh-huh. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Again, man, this is nuclear warfare, man. Ain't nobody going to survive that thing. And if you do, it was ordained by the Most High God, man. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where we in the well of righteousness. Read that one more time. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we, the, 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 the remnant, the ones who keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, come on. According to his promise. The promise that he gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, come on. Look for new heavens. We're going to be looking for that thing. And a new earth. And a new uh, new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Where ain't nothing but righteousness going to abide, man. That's the only thing going to be there. Now let's look at what's going on um with this um Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Amos 5 and 18, come on. The book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 18. 
Woe unto what? Woe what? Woe destruction come on. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Read that again. Woe unto destruction unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Sitting around waiting on the end days, talking about some. Oh, I wish the end time. I hurry up and come on. Read it again. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Come on. To what end is it for you? You don't know what's going to happen to you. We all striving to say we're going to get into the kingdom, but none of us really know. Come on. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The day of the Lord is what? Darkness and not light. The day of the Lord is dark, man, and no light going to be in it, man. Matthew 24, verse 21 through 22. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21 through 22. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation. Then shall be what? Great tribulation. These are the end of days. Come on. Such as was not since the beginning of the world. Y'all ain't never seen what the Most High going to show y'all. Come on. To this time. To this time. The Bible done recorded it already. Come on. No, not ever shall be. What did the Bible say again? No, not ever shall be. Ain't none going to be as bad as when he come back. Come on. And except those days should be shortened. Except what? Those days should be shortened. And as he had, if he didn't have pity on us, what would happen? There should there should no flesh be saved. Would nobody be left on earth, man? Come on. But for the elect say. But for who? The elect say. But for who? The elect say. The Israelites, come on. Those days shall be shortened. For those who keep in the laws, statutes, and commandments, man. Jump down to verse 30 and verse 31 now. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 30 and 31. Come on. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. To read that again. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Come on. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Wait a minute. All the what? Tribes of the earth mourn. All the what? The tribes of the earth mourn. So the Most High still sees all nations in their tribal estates. Read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming. They gonna see who? The Son of Man coming. Read from the top one more time, up. Huh? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. I thought everybody's supposed to be happy when he uncracked that sky, man, and come back to rescue people. What did it say they gonna be? And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. That's right. Come on. And they shall see the Son of Man coming. In the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Uh huh. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Uh huh. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. That's right. He going to get the remnant that he came back from. Not all, but a remnant of his people. That's all he's coming back to get. Psalms 68 and verse 21. Psalms 68 and verse 21. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 21. <clears throat> but God shall wound the head of his enemies. What are he, he going to do to his enemies? But God shall wound the head of his enemies. He's going to knock their top off. Come on. And the hairy scalp of such as, excuse me, and the hairy scalp of such and one as goeth on still in his trespass. Uh huh. Read it again. But God shall wound the head of his enemies, uh -huh. and the hairy scalp of such, and one as goeth on still in his trespass. Right, I told you, he gonna knock they top off, man. He ain't playing, he ain't come back to kiss no babies, and that like a presidential campaign on earth showing it who he is and everything, he coming back to have the business, man. Luke, chapter 19, verse 27. Luke, chapter 19, and verse 27. Read. The book of Luke, Chapter 19, verse 27. Uh huh. But those mine enemies. Those who? Mine enemies. Come on. Which would not that I should reign over them. They don't say that they won't because this is your Howard Shot speaking right here. They don't wish that he would rule over them. Come on. Bring hither. Bring hither. Bring them before me. And slay them. And do what? Slay them. And do what? Slay them.
Yeah. They head off. This is where the, the Islamic and the Muslims get their belief and ran with it because they think that they are the ones that to bring forth judgment. But he said that he was going to be the ones that didn't want to listen uh, to him or uh, be under his command to slay them. Read it from the top one more time, Ah. But those mine enemies, those mine enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, that hope that Yahweh Shai don't want him to reign over them. Come on. Bring hither, bring them here, and slay them before me. And slay them before me. The most high ain't playing, man. Now we're going to find out who he gave that order to the slay, man. Jeremiah 51, verse 19 through 22. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verses 19 through 22. Come on. The portion of Jacob is not like them. This portion of Jacob, the remnant that's left, we are not like the rest of the world. Come on. For he is the former of all things. We are the former. We was with him in the beginning, back in Genesis, when he say, I divided the, the light from the darkness. Come on. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. And all of everything is in Israel. Come on. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of what? The Lord of hosts is his name. Come on. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. He called Israel his what? Read that again. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. We are his battle axe and weapons of war. Come on. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. With who? With thee will I break in pieces the nations. Come on. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Come on. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. Uh-huh. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. He ain't got, he's no respect of a person, man. No kind of respect for anybody, man. If you ain't keeping these laws, statutes, and, 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 and commandments, you in trouble. Again, you in trouble if you ain't keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Psalms chapter 139. Verse 19 through 22 again. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 139. Right. Verses 19 through 22. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked. Do say that again? Surely thou wilt slay the wicked. They already dead, man. Come on. Oh God, depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. Uh-huh. For they speak against thee wickedly. They speak against the Most High, Yahweh, wickedly, come on. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. They take his name in vain because they don't pay him no attention, come on. Do not I hate them, O Lord? The David is saying, do not I hate them, O Lord? Come on. That hate thee. The ones that hate you. So, you know, that's that's how we supposed to be against the enemies tonight, now today, come on. And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? And I hate the ones that rise up against you, come on. I hate them with perfect hatred. I hate them with a perfect hatred. That thing is manifest. Come on. I count them my enemies. I count them as my enemy too. Because if our commanding chief said that's our enemy, that's our enemy as well, man. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 4. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4. Uh-huh. But the righteousness... But the righteousness Shall he judge the poor? I'm sorry. But with righteousness uh -huh. shall he judge the poor. Stop. Let's flip over to Psalms 119. We're coming right back and see what this righteousness is talking about. Psalms 119 verse 142. Psalms 119 verse 142. So we get a better understanding of what this word righteousness means. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 142. Uh-huh. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Read it again. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The law is the truth, man. That righteousness is the law that he's talking about. Let's go back now. Isaiah 11 and verse 4 again. Bring it out. The book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 4. Uh-huh. But with righteousness, but with the law, statutes, and commandments, shall he judge the poor. This is what he's going to judge the poor by, man. Come on. And reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Uh-huh. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. We going to smite, meaning destroy the people of the earth. And what rod? We that rod, man. It's the Israelites, the remnant that remain, that keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Read. 
and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Uh-huh. Read it one more time. But, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Uh-huh. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. With the breath of his lips, he going to send forth the order and we going to take care of business, man. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 16. Bring it out, Op. The book of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 16. Uh-huh. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. Read that again. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. He want to live. That's a man who want to live. Come on. But he that despises his ways shall die. What's going to happen to the despiser? He shall die. What's going to happen to the despiser? He shall die. He's going to get your head knocked off, man. The most high ain't playing with nobody. He's not a respecter of person. He don't care who you is. Unless you're keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, you in the other lane. Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 33. Come on. The book of Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 33. Uh-huh. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Read that again. And the slain of the Lord Yahweh shall be at that day from one end of the earth for way over there even unto the other end of the earth. To way over there. Come on. They shall not be limited neither gathered nor bury. Ain't nobody gonna cry over them. Ain't nobody gonna gather together for them. And they neither they gonna be buried. We're gonna leave them right where we killed them at. Come on. They shall be dung upon the ground. Read it again, huh? And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be limited, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the earth upon the ground. That's right. They're gonna stay where they get their head knocked off at, that's where they're gonna rest. Rest in peace, nigga. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 through 9. Because the show ain't going to be in peace. <laughs> Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 through 9. Bring it out, huh? The book of Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 9. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, and this right here is a parable, so you can't take it literally for what it says. Come on. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. You heard what he said? The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king. Come on. Which made a marriage for his son. But this 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 parable is going into how the most high views what goes on with his servants and on earth too. Come on. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Right. He's having a wedding feast. And he sent out invitations to come to the wedding. But with nobody giving attention to that thing. Read. Again, he sent forth other servants. He sent forth a second wave of servants. Saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. I have prepared a table, slaughtered all my animals, drank wine. Everything is already ready. All this waiting on is y'all to come. Come on. And all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Uh-huh. But they made light of it. They made light of it. They didn't pay them no attention. One talking about, I got to go to the club tonight. I got to get ready. I'm about to barbecue right now. It all kind of matters of different things. Come on. And went their ways. Uh-huh. One to his farm. Another to his merchandise. Uh -huh. He's telling you right now, they act like they got their own lives. Come on, what well, he telling them? He done prepared a place for them. Come on. And the remnant took his service and entreated them spitefully. They, they took a remnant of the ones he sent out with the messages. They took them how? And entreated them spitefully. Come on. And slew them. And what? And slew them. And what? And slew them. And they killed the messenger, man. Come on. But when the king heard thereof, when the most high heard thereof, what had then happened? He was wroth. He was pissed, man. And he sent forth his army. He sent forth what? His army. His what? His army. So you know these armies coming to kill people, man. Come on. And destroyed those murderers. And destroyed those murderers, man. And burned up their city. 
and burn they cities, man, to the ground. This is a this is a picture of what end times is gonna be right here because he's been telling people for eons, come into this truth, come into this into, into my own, come here and let me love you like you're supposed to. But they rejecting that thing, man. So when they get caught in these fires, man, it's gonna be too late. Come on. Then says he to his servants, uh huh, the wedding is ready. The wedding is ready. Come on. But they which were biting were not worthy. The ones that were, they wasn't the worthy ones, man. Come on. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, right, be it to the marriage. Do what? Be it to the marriage. This is our job. This is a commandment by the Most High. We are to go out and be it people to come into the marriage of the Most High. Because without that thing, you doomed, man. You doomed, man. Where we at now? We're going to Job. 13 and 5. Job chapter 13 and verse 5. Come on. The book of Job chapter 13 verse 5. Uh huh. Oh that ye would all together hold your peace and it should be your wisdom. Read that again. Oh that ye would all together hold your peace uh -huh. and it should be your wisdom. Shut up and listen to what these Christians say. Read that one more time, and it shall be your wisdom, man. Not what I read and what it means to me. No, that ain't what the Bible's talking about. Read it again, Ah. Oh, that ye would all together hold your peace. Hold your peace. What you got and what you think is not what's going on in this book. Come on. And it should be your wisdom. And it's good. And that right there going to be your wisdom. Listen to what these scriptures for exactly what they say. The most high that needs you to interpret nothing. He already did lay down the blueprints of that thing. All you need to do is understand it, man. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5. You step on your own foot when you're trying to interpret this Bible when he what he won't he, he already just said it. Come on. The book of Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5. Uh-huh. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven. I beseech, I'm begging you, come on. The great and terrible God. The great and who? Terrible God. The great and who? Terrible God. The most high is terrible, man. Come on. That keep his covenant and mercy. For them that love him and observe his commandments. No, he keep a covenant with the wicked ones. Read it again. For the whole uh -huh, Start from the top. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven. Uh-huh. The great and terrible God. The great and terrible Yahweh, come on. That keep his covenant and mercy for them that love him. He keep his covenants and mercy for only those who keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. It's not what you've been thinking, man. Come on. And observe his commandments. And he observed his commandments. Because if you outside of the bouncing of things, you'll hear your top knocked off, man. We already didn't read the scriptures where he didn't say this plain as day, man. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 17. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. Bring it out. For the Lord your God is God of gods, uh huh, and Lord of lords, uh huh, a great God, a mighty and a terrible. Might and what? A terrible. Mighty and what? A terrible. Come on. Which regardeth not person. He do what? Regardeth not person. He don't care who you is. Read. Nor taketh reward. He don't take no rewards. You can't pay him off to get him off your rear end, man. Read that from the top again. <laughs> For the Lord your God. Is God of gods. He's Yahweh. He's El Hiram over there. El Hiram's come on. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords, come on. A great God. A great God is he. A mighty and a terrible. Mighty and terrible. Come on. Which regard is not person. We already done read the scriptures about regard if not terrible. Nor taketh reward. You can't pay the most high off. Your money is boo-boo to him, man. He don't need your money, man. Isaiah 45. In 13, Isaiah 42, my bad, Isaiah 42 and 13. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 42, verse 13. Come on. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. How he going to go forth? As a mighty man. Come on. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. <laughs> he going to stir up what? Jealousy like a man of war. That's right. Come on. He shall cry. Yea, roar. He gonna do what? He shall cry. Yea, roar. I don't know if y'all ever heard a lion. Y'all better start watching Animal Kingdom when they roar in the wilderness. That means somebody he finna get at somebody's ass. Come on. He shall prevail against his enemy. He gonna do what? He shall prevail against his enemy. No, they gonna have a tie. 
He shall prevail against his enemy. It's going to be a draw. He shall prevail against his enemy. That's right, man. Read it from the top one more time. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Uh-huh. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Let's listen to something else. Uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. About that man of war, man. He been said. It's nothing new. Nothing new up under the sun according to these scriptures. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Come on. The Lord is a man of war. What is he? The Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is a man of war. Read it again. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Yahweh is his name. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 23. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 23. Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. Uh-huh. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation. We should not partake in the same things of these other nations. They holidays, they traditions, birthday, Christmas, Valentine's Day. All of these things were taught to you by your oppressor. Come on. Which I cast out before you. He cast out before us. They supposed to be the servant. But here they got us on the bottom, man. Come on. For they committed all these things. They committed all these things. Them things is the sin. Abominations. Come on. And therefore I abhor them. I abhor. I hate them folks, man. Read that again. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation. You should not follow after these other nations, man. Which I cast out before you. Uh-huh. For they committed all these things. Sin. And therefore I abhor them. I hate them people, man. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. But we bow down to them by keeping they, they, they traditions, man, and not the most highs. Come on. Nor serve them. When you serve them by following they traditions and not the most high. Read. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. He what? Am a jealous God. He don't like that thing, man. Come on. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. He going to come and deal with you, man. It ain't over with. Read that again, I. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, uh -huh. nor serve them. Now, one of their days, man, holidays, traditions, none of that stuff that they, these folks didn't put upon, upon us. Come on. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. He's a what? Jealous God. Come on. Visiting the iniquity of the Father. He gonna come see about you. Upon the children. Uh-huh. Unto the third and fourth generation gonna, uh -huh. of them that hate me. He gonna come see about you later on, man. Don't think because you didn't. You didn't got away, man, like you didn't got away with them cries, man. He gonna come back and see you again, man. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 3. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 3. Come on. The, the book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. But he answered and said unto them. What did he say? Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Read that again, man. This is Yahweh Shai. He the one speaking this, man. Come on. But he answered and said unto them, Come on. Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? By who traditions? By man you. traditions. Man traditions. These holidays. Everything you've been taught here is an illusion, man, to keep you on the bottom. And you never going to get on top, man, until you wake up. But I got news, man. You ain't got to wake up. He going to knock the top of your dome off, man. We already done read them scriptures. Psalms chapter 47 verse 2. Psalms chapter 47 verse 2. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 47 verse 2. Come on. For the Lord most high is terrible. He what? He is terrible. He is what? He is terrible. The root word of the uh, terror, you know that's a terrorist or terrible. Read it again. For the Lord most high is terrible. He terrible. The root word there is terrible. The terror. Come on. He is a great king over all the earth. Hold on. Wait a minute. But even though he said he was, he's, he's terrible, it said he's a great king over the earth. Come on. Read it again. For the Lord most high is terrible. He's what? He is terrible. Come on. For 
He is a great king over all the earth. But he's still a great king, man. Because what is it just because he did these these what you might say is out of bounds? Is is he unrighteous? By no means, man. By no means. Nehemiah chapter nine, verse thirty two. Come on. The book of Nehemiah, chapter nine, verse thirty two. Come on. Now therefore, our God, the great the mighty and the terrible God. What? Read that from the top again, huh? Now, therefore, our God. Our God, Yahweh. The great, the mighty, and the terrible God. The terrible God, come on. Who keep his covenant and mercy. Let not all the trouble seem little before thee. Uh -huh. That have come upon us. On our kings, on our princes, and on our priests. And on our prophets, and on our fathers. And on all thy people since the time of the king of Assyria unto this day. All the stuff that's been going on with us, man. Read that top part again. Huh? Now, therefore, our God. Our God, Yahweh. The great. The, the great. The mighty. The mighty. And the terrible God. And the God. terrible God, man. That's, that's all I needed right there to remind these people what today is. The almighty terror, man. This is the most high Yahweh, man. He's the almighty terror, man. Psalms. Chapter 66, verse 3 through 5. Psalms, chapter 66, verse 3 through 5. He's the almighty terror, man. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 66, verses 3 through 5. Come on. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Read that again. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Come on. Through through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. They ain't got no other choice. They're going to have to submit themselves to them. Remember the, the script said, every knee shall bow. You ain't got no choice, no choice, man. Come on. All the earth shall worship thee. All the earth going to worship him, whether they like to or not. Come on. And shall sing unto thee. They're going to be forced to sing, man. But the most of us, we're going to sing. And, and, and we ain't, ain't going to have to be forced, man. It's going to be a beautiful day for those who have kept the law, statutes, and commandments. Come on. They shall sing to thy name, Selah. That's right. Amen. Isaiah. Okay, come on. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing. Read that again. Come and see the works of God. They are what? He is terrible. He is terrible. In his doing. In everything he do, man. Toward the children of men. The children of men. That's another topic. But read that one more time. Mark that verse there. Come and see the works of God. Watch the works of God. The most high. Yahweh. He is terrible. He is what? Terrible. He is what? Terrible. He is terrible in his doings. Come on. In his doing toward the children of men. That's right. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 10. Through 12. Right. Through 12. Isaiah 43, verse 10 through 12. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 10 through 12. Ye are my witnesses. Huh? We what? Ye are my witnesses. So we all are witnesses. Says the Lord. Says Yahweh. And my servant, whom I have chosen. And we are his servants. He has chosen us. We read that back in Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Um... Um, Le Leviticus 20 and 26 Come on That ye may know and believe me That ye may know and believe Yahweh And understand that I am he That he is the one Before me there was no God formed Was nobody he's the first Neither shall there be after me Ain't nothing gonna be after him I even I Am the Lord and beside me There is no savior there is no one else. There is no other God but him. Come on. I have declared and have saved, and I have shown when there was no strange God among you. Right. Therefore, ye are my witnesses. We are the witness still. Says the Lord. Says Yahweh. That I am God. Read it one more time. Come on. Yea, before the day was, I am he. Before days were ever committed or put in existence, he was already there, man, is what he's saying. Read. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. And once the Most High gets you in his sights, you done. Come on. I will work, and who shall let it? When his works goes forth, who going to be able to say anything about it, man? Read them, read them, 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 uh, them uh, three verses again. Huh? Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, 
and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, and have saved, and I have showed, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. That's the end of today's lesson. Israel, thank you for tuning in. Judah Knights of Israel, and we say, Shalom. Shalom.